At 120 meters tall and more powerful than any rocket ever flown, SpaceX's Starship isn't just a launch vehicle. It's an entirely new class of spacecraft. Built for deep space missions, rapid reusability, and extreme payload capacity, it represents a fundamental shift in how we access orbit, return to the moon, and ultimately reach Mars. After years of suborbital tests and experimental flight failures, Starship has recently entered a new phase, integrated orbital missions with real engineering objectives. These launches are no longer just demonstrations, they're part of a maturing system intended to become operational within the next year. And now, just weeks after the successful Flight 9 mission, all attention turns to the next launch, Starship Flight 10. With both hardware preparations and regulatory reviews underway, this upcoming flight will test the limits of what Starship can do and determine whether the program is finally ready to scale. But before we break down what to expect from Flight 10, make sure you're subscribed to stay updated on the space industry's biggest developments, including real-time updates on Starship, Artemis, and more. Starship Flight 10 is currently targeting late June to early July 2025, with its launch window dependent on FAA approval and maritime airspace coordination. While the specific date hasn't been locked in, the mission is already well into the pre-flight phase. Booster 16, the first stage vehicle for this flight, has successfully completed cryogenic proofing and a full static fire test in June. The upper stage, Ship 36, is a Block 2 variant like its predecessor on Flight 9, but it's still awaiting its static fire campaign before final stacking and integration. SpaceX will only move forward once both vehicles are fully cleared, and the FAA grants a launch license which could arrive within days if no significant delays arise from post-Flight 9 analysis. The goals of Flight 10 are tightly focused. Technically, it must build on the partial success of Flight 9 by pushing forward on three fronts. Reliability of Block 2 hardware, advanced recovery systems, and preparation for orbital refueling operations. Starting with reliability, Flight 7 through 9 revealed that Block 2 ships still suffer from flight phase anomalies. Flight 7's vehicle was lost due to harmonic vibration-induced propellant leaks, while Flight 8 exploded during ascent. Flight 9 finally achieved orbital objectives, but SpaceX needs another back-to-back -back success to prove these issues are resolved. That's where Ship 36 and Booster 16 come in. Both are expected to feature the latest upgrades in avionics, engine shielding, and thermal protection. The onboard sensors will collect detailed structural and propulsion performance data, feeding into design validation ahead of the even more advanced Block 3 vehicles. Next, recovery is under the microscope. While the Super Heavy booster has now been successfully caught twice using the tower's mechanical arms, known as the chopsticks, SpaceX has yet to recover a Starship upper stage. Flight 10 will attempt to change that. The company is expected to trial new heat-resistant materials and modified re-entry flap geometry designed to withstand higher thermal loads. If Ship 36 can survive atmospheric re-entry and either execute a controlled ocean splashdown or reach a targeted landing zone, it would mark a major milestone in Starship's path toward full reusability. The third focus area is orbital refueling readiness. While Flight 10 itself won't attempt ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer, it's an essential precursor to the first full refueling demonstration later in 2025. NASA's Artemis program depends on this capability to land astronauts on the moon, as the human landing system version of Starship will require several tanker flights to fuel for the descent and return. For that reason, Flight 10 needs to prove that Starship can fly back-to-back -back reliably, perform precise orbital maneuvers, and validate thermal control systems in space. These steps are foundational to executing the complex choreography required for refueling tankers to dock and transfer cryogenic propellants in low Earth orbit. From a broader programmatic perspective, the success of Flight 10 is directly tied to upcoming missions that matter for both national and commercial stakeholders. NASA is watching closely. Any significant failure could delay the Artemis 3 mission, currently scheduled for mid-2027. 
The Department of Defense is also assessing whether Starship can support rapid response payload delivery in future military operations. Meanwhile, SpaceX has its own deadlines. Starlink's Gen 2 satellite deployment, Mars cargo missions, and a potential Earth-to-Earth -Earth cargo market all rely on high-cadence reusable Starship launches. Internally, SpaceX aims to scale to bi-weekly launches by 2026, and that timeline demands immediate and repeatable reliability starting now. Technically, Flight 10 will also serve as a system stress test. Engineers will monitor how the new hardware behaves under real flight conditions, including Raptor engine vibration harmonics, flap actuation timing, and propellant feed dynamics during stage separation and coast phase. All of these systems must work flawlessly if Starship is to support longer duration flights, such as tanker missions or lunar payload deliveries. From a cost perspective, each flight that demonstrates reusability moves SpaceX closer to its target of $10 million per launch. That cost profile is what makes the Starship model disruptive. If achieved, it would undercut nearly every competitor in the global launch market, including expendable rockets and partially reusable systems. In turn, this could radically lower the entry cost for space-based research, satellite internet, planetary science, and even tourism. But it all comes down to execution. Flight 10 must clear both technical and regulatory hurdles. While FAA approvals appear to be moving forward, SpaceX cannot afford major anomalies that lead to debris dispersion or environmental violations. Past flights, especially Flight 7, triggered multi-month investigations after debris scattered into sensitive regions. That kind of delay now would set back the entire refueling roadmap and reduce NASA's confidence in meeting lunar timelines. If Flight 10 succeeds, if Ship 36 performs nominally, if Booster 16 lands cleanly, and if all subsystems operate within expected tolerances, it will mark the first time two Starship missions in a row have achieved core mission objectives. That's not just a milestone, that's a turning point. And if SpaceX can build on this momentum, the next phase, Block 3 vehicles, orbital refueling, and human landing system tests will be on solid ground. The bottom line is this. Flight 10 is the gateway to Starship's operational future. It will confirm whether SpaceX's recent engineering fixes are reliable and whether the company is ready to ramp up its launch cadence. Failure would set the program back months. Success could unlock a new era of space access where fully reusable high-capacity launches become routine. So keep your eyes on late June because what happens in the next few weeks might just decide the next few decades of spaceflight. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.